question of why Protestants should read Aquinas, Thomas Aquinas, is, is an interesting one. Uh, instinctively, I think, Protestants, we are suspicious of the Middle Ages because the Reformation, we understand the Reformation as a reaction to the corruption of the Middle Ages, and we tend, therefore, to subsume everything that happened between, say, 500 and 1500 as part of a continuum of slow degradation and corruption. And Aquinas, of course, as a 13th century figure, stands right in the middle of that. We're also perhaps aware that Aquinas is very influential on modern Roman Catholic theology that we tend to define ourselves over against. So Aquinas uh, scores low on that scale as well. I think we need to reorient our thinking a bit and realize that not everything that was said or done in the Middle Ages was bad. And if we love the reformers and we love Augustine, there were those who were faithful voices for Augustine's theology in the Middle Ages, of whom Aquinas is one, on his understanding of election, predestination, and how that connects to grace. Aquinas is really somebody from whom we can benefit and learn. Of course, he's a profound theologian. He wrote an awful lot. There's a question of, you know, where would be a good place to start with Thomas Aquinas. I would suggest uh, anybody interested in, in delving deeper into Aquinas might want to, to think about starting in a couple of places. Uh, one, all these great theologians throughout history have always written prayers. And it's, it's a great way to get into a theologian's thinking, to go and find some of the prayers that they left behind. If you do an internet search or, or buy a volume of selections of Aquinas' writings, probably you'll find there some of the prayers of Aquinas. And that gives you a, 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 an easy access into how his theology works out devotionally. At a more uh, sophisticated level, perhaps, uh, get hold of his major theological work, the Summa Theologiae. It's, it's massive and daunting by its size, but when you start to read it, these are classroom notes. They're laid out as a, a basic course in theology for students. So there's a great clarity to the way that Aquinas writes. You'll find it on the internet. Uh, Summa Theologiae, look it up and read some of the questions of the Summa and you'll see how clear and in many ways straightforward a thinker Aquinas was. And of course, uh, he was a member of the Order of Preachers, the Dominicans. Much of his life was spent expounding scripture. You can also get hold of some of the sermons or commentaries of Aquinas on books of the Bible. I would recommend his commentary on Romans as a good place to start because that takes you into some of the central thinking of Aquinas on the love of God and issues like that. So Aquinas, uh, he's a daunting figure to think of. He perhaps has a bad press in Protestantism, but he's very well worthwhile reading as a faithful representative of Augustine's theology of grace and as somebody who wrestled with great clarity with the doctrine of God and the revelation of God in Scripture.